Joyful Talk, Episode 10. Three Rules of Deep Practice. Hey, welcome to Joyful Talk. These videos are usually just for subscribers, but this one I have made public. I think every now and again I will do a public video, like maybe, maybe every 10th video will be public, who knows. This one will be about the deep practice, how to get good at a skill, both in gaming and life. This is the first video in the skill learning in gaming and life series. I think there will be three of those in this one. I will be sharing three principles of deep learning discovered by uh, Daniel Coyle. He's a psychologist, no one too extraordinary by himself, but he went on a journey that took 10, 20 years, I don't know, most of his life. He went to all the places that consistently produced extremely talented people. He went to Brazil back when Brazil was still... Uh, maybe it is still today, back when Brazil was cranking out all of those amazing uh, soccer players like Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, all these guys. And he went there, he studied the way Brazilians are actually practicing soccer. He went to music studios that uh, produced the top musicians in the world. He went to the Spartak tennis club in Moscow that had... I think they produced, they trained more top 10 tennis players in the world of all the clubs. They, there was a period when they they trained more tennis players in the top 10 than the whole of America, it was ridiculous. He studied their ways of practicing and based on those, he created rules of deep practice, how to practice a skill to get really, really good, really fast. And three of those rules, three main rules I will be sharing with you today. So pay attention, because you will be, sooner or later, learning a skill, and you will want to get good fast. And whether it's, it's a game that you will be passionate about, or whether it's a life-related skill, like maybe a new job, maybe you'll want to learn an instrument, maybe you will want to drive a car or drive a, an airplane. You don't drive an airplane. Well, there are skills, and you will be learning them, so pay attention. The first rule of deep practice is to always stay on the, on the edge of your ability, like on the edge. If you go too far, your hand will disappear. If you go, if you engage too little, you will not practice, you will not improve. The, the trick is to always stay on the edge, always keep sweating, always keep struggling. You need just the right amount of struggle. You need to feel it. What's... Am I on the edge? Am, is it too easy? Is it too hard? If it's too hard, your hand will disappear. It's, you need to stay right on the edge, like here. <laughs> it's important. Every single uh, place that Daniel Coyle has interviewed uh, always kept their players sweating, always kept them, kept them struggling, but never struggling too much. They said that fr too much frustration is never good. When you're reaching that point, where you're struggling so much, you're just failing everything and you're feeling horrible, that's when the top players stop. You watch all these movies where the, the main character is, is struggling and failing and then keeps struggling and keeps failing. It's not really the right idea. You need to be, you need just the right amount of struggle to not get too frustrated, to fail all the time, but also not too little because when you're chill and everything's working, you're probably not working too, too hard. Uh, for example, if you are playing uh, a, a competitive game, there are people who just got comfortable with their current skill level and they're, they're like, let's just play with friends that I know I can beat because I feel comfy then and I feel good about myself when I win like 80% of the time. And that's where you don't improve. There are also people who struggle too much, have like 10% win rate, and it's also not good. You need to stay at around 50-40% win rate, always keep improving. That's why the matchmaking systems are really good for the correct amount of practice and struggling, because they will always make sure you get between 60-40% to 40, uh, win rate. 
stay within the area where you're struggling. If you're one of the top players, like maybe at the top of failure rankings, and you still want to improve, I suggest you stop using the matchmaking if you're not getting that 50% win rate and only go against those players you're actually struggling against. Find a couple of friends that, you, that are really hard for you to beat, but possible if you do it right. Get the right amount of struggle. That's the first rule. Always stay at the edge of your ability when you're struggling. Another example of uh, just the right amount of struggle. Now, when I first started learning guitar, I couldn't hold these strings correctly. Like, I couldn't make, make the sound. I was like, 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 all awful and stuff. And then the, the, the right amount of struggle was just to put the fingers in the right places to make it sound okay. Now, after a few months of practice, I can do that. I can do that. So now the right amount of struggle for me would be to switch between them. That doesn't sound too good. So when I can't get it right on the first try, that means I'm struggling. Like, hear this? This, this one is off. That's why I'm struggling, I'm, I'm failing, and that's good. That's where you want to practice. When you're failing it the first try, but then you can always correct yourself. This is a little bit too easy for me now, so I will find a different combo, like maybe the dreaded F chord that I just can't get right. So this is the right amount of struggle for me, I just can't get it right, but if I... Oh, there you go. Almost there, almost there. Now that's the right amount of struggle. Now, my hands are a little bit sweaty from the video producing things and the, the, the studio lights. But I know that if my hands weren't sweaty from the, from the studio lights, I could just barely get that F chord right. So that's where I practice right now, or I practice... Switching between them, because that's where it's hard for me. It's not impossible, I can get it right every once per four or five times, but I can always correct myself and I can always struggle to get better, but it's not hopeless. There are some things that are hopeless, like switching from a normal D chord to the horribly difficult F chord really fast. If I, tr if I practice that, I would never get it right. It, there's just no way, I, I can't get my fingers on that F chord fast enough, it's just, it's just no way for me to do it. So if, if there's 0% win rate in, in, in my practice, that's bad. I want to stay around uh, 30 to 50 when I'm playing guitar, maybe 20, it's okay. But in the computer games, I would say about 50% win rate is the right amount of struggle for any player to improve fast. So keep in mind to have the right amount of struggle in your practice. Rule number two is get the right habits from the start. Your brain is brilliant when it comes to learning. It's just amazing when it comes to learning. There are no learning impaired people. There are only people who use their brain incorrectly, but the brain itself is a genius learning machine. The problem is that the brain isn't as good at unlearning. Once you learn something, it's not as easy to unlearn it. That's why it's so important for you to get the right habits from the very start of your practice. Because once you get the wrong habits, it's going to be so much harder for you to let go of them and replace them with the, with the good ones. It's so important that you get the right habits from the get-go. The Spartak Tennis Club that I told you before, that, that I told you about before, they forbid their players, they literally forbid their players to play matches until they practice swings for a few years, until they get the right habits in, in their body, and then they allow them to play matches, and the players are just amazing, because they, they take all those right habits, and put them together into a successful uh, tennis play. They're like, you want to practice in our club? You don't play matches. You want to play matches? Get out of here. Here, we practice swings. 
and then they practice swings and then they win everything. It's ridiculous. But that's how to do it. You, di you divide your, your skill into manageable chunks, like swings in tennis, like chords and then chord switching in guitar, like uh, specific pieces of micromanagement, or, like moving your units in the right way in StarCraft. You, you find those pieces and you get them right from the start. If you've already gotten them wrong, that's the right, then as soon as possible, start getting them right. The first step to getting them right is to watch a master of that ability. Watch someone who really does it good. Watch him do it correctly to, to get the right picture of how it's supposed to look like. In case of the guitar, in case of the guitar I watch someone play and then uh, I make sure the chord is sounding right. There are a lot of guitar learning players who are inspired and want to play their favorite song and so they find their song on YouTube and something something like that comes out of it like oh this is an amazing song Oh, I'm a rock star. It actually reminds me of my song. Let's do that all the time. That's bullshit. That's the worst way of learning guitar. Like, sure, it's motivated to find your favorite songs and then and then practice them. But by taking on those really complicated and difficult pieces of songs, you will be failing all the time and learning the wrong habits. And it's actually going to slow down your practice more than speed it up. The correct way to do it is to take maybe the same song, but divide it into chunks. And I can hear that the struggle I'm having is with this fourth finger, he can't really get out there. I, he's not stretched enough, he's not strong enough, not precise enough to really nail that, that string over there. And that's why, that's... For, See, that, that's my fourth finger messing it up. Hearing that, I can divide the song into small parts to only practice my fourth finger placement to get, uh, to get it, the sound to be just right. Divide it into smaller pieces that I actually can get right before I move forward with the whole song. Don't practice the whole song piece that you can never get right. Divide it into such, a small, such small pieces that you that you can get right. Nope. Nope. But I can get it right once per four or five times, the right amount of struggle. Always make sure you have the right amount of struggle, divide it into chunks that you can learn correctly and then from those small chunks, build the bigger picture, build the skill from the chunks. That's why most of my guitar practice is actually just learning the chords and then learning to connect the chords together into, into uh, longer pieces of music. I will not be learning songs. I will be learning connections between G and D. And I will be practicing the connection between G and D and, or or C and E until I can connect them together really fast and cleanly. When I can connect them, them fast and clean, then I will try uh, connections of three chords. Uh, and, and then from those building blocks that I can connect together, I can build any song, any simple song. I will not be learning one simple song to and then practicing for months and failing. I want to, be, to get all the building blocks into my hands, into my body, into my muscle memory, because from those I can build anything I want. You need to take the same approach in any kind of skill learning, in gaming, in job-related skills, in computer-related skills. Find the building blocks. Learn them correctly from the ground up. And then put them together. This rule in particular relates to the hard skills that I have uh, described in the first video, how to be a better gamer. It's actually the, the second Joyful Talk. The first video about skill learning that I made for Joyful Talk 
It's it's about how to be a better gamer. It's, it's the soft and hard skills. The hard skills are the mechanical skills, the muscle memory, what you have in your hands, in your body, rather than the soft skills, which are the decision-making skills. In games like Faria or StarCraft, most of the skills are actually soft skills, the, the skills of decision-making. But there are skills like precision clicking and micromanagement of your units or accuracy in... Uh, in shooter games that are hard skills and it's for those skills that the second rule applies most divide it into small chunks learn them correctly from the ground up and then put them together into the skill if you want to be learning a shooter game like say counter-strike play a lot of the aim maps those where you only spawn and aim at enemies and just practice uh, recoil patterns of a specific gun. Practice the recoil pattern of AK, practice the recoil pattern of M4 to uh, kill a player in three shots. Get that one single skill and then practice it over and over again. And, and once you get it right, connect it into your larger gameplay of Counter-Strike. That's so, such a more efficient approach than jumping into a game and practicing whatever, getting a different gun every time you spawn. It's just divide it into small chunks and practice them separately. That's the way you get really good really fast. Because like I said, your brain is really smart at learning. It's really good at learning, but it's really bad at unlearning. So make sure you write the right, to learn the right, uh, the right skills. In StarCraft, for example, if, if you're playing Zerg, learn skills like mutilist micro by playing 10 or 20 games against your friend when you only go for mutilists and he only goes terran with marines and and then you have a lot of micro battles to learn those focus on those and get them right in that specific uh, strategic uh, circumstance or play with play baneling wars link baneling to base with your friend all the time. That's what I used to do. I, I got a friend and I play like 50 Baneling Wars war games. They take like 10, 10 minutes each, but I really got good. And then I had 70% win rate as Zerg, and Zerg versus Zerg, and then 50 and 40% win rate uh, Zerg versus Terran Protoss. I got really good at Baneling Wars and it got me so many wins. Even though I didn't always go for uh, Link Baneling aggression, because I got so good, I had a ridiculous win ratio in that matchup. And that's because of targeted practice. Targeted practice is how you get really good. The third rule of deep practice is do it in short but regular bursts. It's, it's kind of a part of our culture with movies and books. It, it's this image of a champion of, of a certain skill. You, you can imagine like Rocky maybe from the old movies. When you think about such people, you think about you know, practicing day and night, 14 hours a day, like practicing all the time until they fall off, fall fall down from exhaustion. It's actually not the right way to practice. It's what sounds heroic, sounds like a gigantic sacrifice that inspires you to greatness. But it's not actually the way masters are training in those, in those talent hotbeds that uh, Daniel Coyle was visiting. It turns out that the best of the best are practicing regularly but never too much, never 14 hours at a time. When they feel enough frustration to fail all the time, they just stop. And there is a neurological reason for this. It is actually the right way to practice according to how the brain works. Uh, practicing a skill is building neurological connections in your brain and then strengthening those connections. I'm not going to bother you with scientific names like myelin and, and other things. It's just, just get it into your head that you're building a connection and then reinforcing it every time you practice. You're reinforcing it. There's actually a physiological mechanism of uh, neurotransmitters uh, 
clumping up around the, a certain neurological uh, pathway to make it more conductive to, uh, to impulses. And the more you practice, the more conductive a certain pathway is, so the impulses will travel that correct pathway, and you will get more precise and more good at a certain skill. That's why you really need to reinforce those pathways, keep reinforcing them all the time to, to build the right skill from the ground up. That's why practice needs to be regular. Every time you skip a day of practice, there, there's a saying, I don't know which uh, pro sports player said that, but he's like, he said something like, when I skip a day of practice, I start to notice it. When, when I skip two days of practice, my wife starts noticing. When I skip three days of practice, everybody notices it. So the top players never skip a day. They are practicing regularly. That's the most important thing to practice regularly, to keep reinforcing those neural connections to get them just right. Because every time you skip practice, those connections are dissipating. Every time you reinforce, they get stronger, they get better, they get more precise. You need to keep practicing regularly. But don't practice too much because frustration, overwhelming frustration, is a signal from your brain that it's time to stop. Your brain is actually reinforcing those neural connections when you stop practicing. When you practice, it's executing them. And when you stop practicing, there's a period called incubation where your brain is actually reinforcing and building those connections, improving them. When you feel overwhelming frustration and you really want to stop, don't, don't mistake frustration with struggle. Struggle is good. It means you're challenged. But frustration means it's time for you to stop because your brain wants to stop executing. Your brain wants to start reinforcing. It's a signal from your brain. It wants to stop practicing and start reinforcing those connections. And it can only do that when you stop practicing and, and do something else. There are ways to boost your incubation to get it more efficient. But there's no way around it. When you're extremely frustrated, you just got to stop. Just, just don't practice anymore. And Daniel Coyle has confirmed that by interviewing a lot of those top players. They stop when they are frustrated and they come back when they no longer are. They are very good at consistent practice, but they never go too long. It's actually between three to five hours a day, never more. There are certain fields like maybe StarCraft where the Koreans are practicing 14 hours a day. It's... It's inspiring in terms of work ethic, but it's not the most efficient way to learn. And I think as StarCraft will start growing as a field, if the, if the sports psychology leaks into StarCraft and other pro gaming scenes, players will actually start practicing less, but much more efficient. And you will see that transformation. But for now, nobody knows what they're doing in StarCraft. The only thing they know how to do is practice more, so that's what they're doing. But I'm telling you, the sports masters, the, the best at music, they are actually not practicing that much, three to five hours a day, but regularly, to allow their neural connections to build at the most efficient rate. That's what the more established scenes like sports and music are actually doing in terms of skill practice. And that's what I recommend to you. Don't practice too much, but practice every day. When you feel overwhelming frustration, let go. And the best way to boost your incubation period is physical activity. Physical activity allows your brain to work at its optimal rate. Also sleep. Sleep and physical activity like uh, jogging or taking a walk. Those are the, the three best ways to boost your incubation. Walk, run, sleep. And that's what I've been doing a lot when I was practicing StarCraft. I would just, just play three or four games, get frustrated, take a walk, take a run, play more. And, and that's why I stopped. I, I couldn't handle it anymore during winter because I couldn't take those walks and runs anymore to actually let go of the frustration and, and that's where I crashed and and my programming career stopped because I couldn't handle the stress of the frustration anymore during winter. But it really helped me to take walks and, and take short runs between my uh, really intense skill practice to let go of the frustration to speed up the incubation and during two months, was it two or three, I got from, from zero, from Silver League, 
to freaking masters. I got there really fast and it wasn't through 14 hours of practice. It was through five to seven hours of practice with really efficient incubation, a lot of sleep, a lot of running. That's how you practice. Make sure the incubation period is optimized. Practice regularly, but never too much. Never overdo it. Always take a walk, take a run, take a nap if you are overwhelmed. Let your brain cool off. Let your brain incubate what you've learned. That's the third that's the third rule. So to, to sum up, the three rules of deep practice are, first of all, stay on the edge of your ability. Not too far, not too close, but stay on the edge. The second rule is to l chunk it down into manageable pieces and learn them correctly from the ground up. Learn it correctly from the get-go. The third rule is to practice regularly, but never too much. Allow your brain for incubation, allow your brain to integrate the skill when you're not learning, but keep reinforcing the neural pathways every single day. With those three rules, you will be learning any kind of skill much, much faster than you have ever before. It's been confirmed in music and sports in many different areas that are already established in terms of uh, sports psychology, skill learning psychology, these rules, I believe as, as the esports is growing, these rules in the next 10 years will be applied to programming and you will see the pro gamers learn that that's actually the right way to practice. That's actually the efficient way to practice because it worked for, for much more competitive fields like music, like soccer, like baseball, like golf. So these rules, Remember them, stick to them, and I will be giving you more if you're my subscriber. This video is free, but usually Joyful Talk is a subscriber-only series if you want to uh, get more information on the skill learning, you just gotta subscribe to my Twitch channel. And I have subscription options below the video before on the Twitch TV slash Joyful Rogue. There is a description be below the video in which there is an option to subscribe if you just found me on YouTube and you want to learn more about skill learning. I will be giving that information to my subscribers because I really want to support you, my amazing, lovely subscribers. In the next videos, I will probably be sharing with you the principles of, of fast skill learning from other areas. Not from sports psychology, but maybe from neuro-linguistic programming, or maybe... I will find more. I, definitely from neuro-linguistic programming, because I'm an expert on that. Maybe from hypnosis, who knows? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> definitely gonna give you some uh, NLP amazing uh, strategies in the next video. So stay tuned. Keep an eye on Joyful Talk, because more is to come. See you in the next one.